All right, everybody, we're live out here in Acres Home. And just let me show you what Bob Watson, Bob Watson was a first baseman for the Houston Astros. And he became the first black general manager hired by the Houston Astros. But at that time, Jim Crane did not own the Astros, y'all. Drayton McClain owned the Astros. He the one hired the first black general manager, which was Bob Watson. Bob Watson used to play for the Houston Astros. He used to play for old man Harpine, the judge. And he knew about the city. So when he came and was promoted to the general manager for the Houston Astros, hired by Drayton McClain, who sold the team to Jim Crane. But we're talking about Bob Watson. He took out of his money to help build a baseball facility. You know, I didn't say baseball field, a facility out here in Acres Home for nothing but the youth and the young blacks that wanted to play baseball. That was the intentions of building this nice facility out here in Acres Home for the youth to be able to come in to play Little League Baseball and also go into the Pony League Baseball and be able to go into the Major and the Minor League organization. Thanks to Mr. Bob Watson, along with Drayton McClain, along with some other people who helped put this together which is our former mayor, Sylvester Turner, because we at Sylvester Turner Park out here in Acres Home. They got a park named after Sylvester Turner. And he deserved it, man. You know, I'm, I'm not playing politics. I'm just going down the phase because every time I think about Sylvester Turner, I think about how he was saying how his mother used to get on her knees and scrub them floors and mop them floors over there at the Rice Hotel. Man, tears came down my eyes because I knew his mother had to catch that old Acres Home bus and first of all had to get a cab to go to the bus station to catch the Acres Home bus because they didn't have city buses running out here in Acres Home. That's why they're so proud of the 44 because the 44 was the original Studiwood. But when they bought in the city and bought in the city service and bought in the bus route, they changed the 44 Studiwood to the 44 Acres home. And today, everybody out here is so proud of the city doing it, that they named this, this community the Faux Folk. That's just how, how proud they was to get this bus service to come and pick up all these people out in Acres home because Acres home was the largest black community in the United States. But we're talking about this baseball field because, see, we are always pointing the finger at the white people, but we don't want to point it at ourselves. That's right. Get in the mirror. Look at yourself. Look at ourselves. They bought this pair. When Bob Watson put this together along with Sylvester Turner, Mitch, Mattress Mac, all the people out here on the north side, they put it together for the young blacks so they could start playing baseball. But no, not these young blacks. They don't want to play baseball. That takes too long. They want to be LeBron and James. They want to play basketball. Baseball, you got to go through too much work. You know, you got to go do the minor league. Then you got to go to the major league. Now, they want to be like LeBron and James, come straight out of high school and go straight up. But let me remind you, ain't but a few like LeBron and James. I can't think of two. That's him and Kobe Bryant. They went straight out of high school and went into the pros. But I'm here today to talk about this baseball field that they built out here in Acres Home. And they built it for the black kids. But like I said, the black kids don't want to play baseball. They want to play basketball. And the rest don't want to play football. Baseball, you, like I said, you got to go through too many loops and too many training to be able to start making money. They want the instant money. They microwave babies. That's what they are. I'm just being straight up with you. So now this park 
Now it's park out here. They ain't finna close this park down because the Hispanics and the Asian people, they coming out here and using this park that once was built for the blacks. But the blacks don't want it. You think they gonna close it down because the blacks don't want this park? Hell no, that ain't the way it go. Life got to go on. If you don't want it, there's somebody next door that do want it. And that's what they doing. The Hispanic kids are coming out here Farming Little League Baseball, Pony League Baseball, they even got three different fields out here. One for the Pony League, one for the Little League, and they got a softball field for the girls. This park go all the way from Victoria to Little Y'all. But I'm here to tell, you, to tell you that along with Bob Watson, the late but never forgotten Jim Ruin, also helped them come out here. Trying to get the young blacks to get into baseball. But they don't want to get into it. That's too much work. So the park is now being occupied by most of the Hispanic kids. And the adults, I'm not going to put all that jacket on these kids because we raised up in Third Ward. We used to have Mr. Pittman used to work at the post office and every day he'd get off a of post office he'd be tired but you know what he got in this truck and gathered us together and started a little league baseball team that was called the Falcons and along with other people at the Massapation Park had little league they also had little league all out there in Sunnyside see the adults don't want to get up off of their butt and try to recruit these kids. And these kids cannot go nowhere without somebody being a leader. But I'm here today. Yes, I'm upset. Because I know the hard work that Bob Watson and the dream he had to be able to one day have a black superstar to come out of this park as a little leaguer and go into the majors. But it didn't happen. As you look at the Astros championship team, they won the World Series twice. How many black players do you see on that team? That's what happens. Blacks don't want to, that's too much work. They got to go through too many changes. They want to play basketball where they ain't got to worry about them with changes. They want to play football where they don't have to worry about working for, six or, for five or six months, half of the year. They don't want that. But you know what? You look at the Astros team. The 2017 championship, the 2022 championship, and I guarantee you there ain't a black on the team. Because the people in the Dominican Republic, they work to try to get in the baseball. They work as a little leaguer. They work as a minor league because they're looking at the big picture. One day they're going to come to the to the major league and be like Al Tuve, Al Tuve, Al Tuve, along with Alvarez, along with the rest of the Dominican guys that the Astros got on their ball club. And I hats off to Dusty Baker. Because, see, when Dusty Baker was born, Dusty Baker born in 1949, a year after me, so we're on the same page. I knew Dusty. I knew Dusty when he was working with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Dusty came up from the old school, and the old school, baseball was our thing. We knew Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Frank Robinson, Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, Satchel Page, Cool Papa Bell. Uh, 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 Josh Gibson we knew all of those people cause see we didn't have a bunch of football like they had today because they wasn't recruiting blacks into football we didn't have basketball like we had today cause they weren't recruiting blacks into basketball all these was white men's sports but later on blacks began to get in and we began to look at football Way before we've been looking at basketball, we're talking about the people here in Houston. People on the East Coast, they always kind of like ba basketball. But we in the South, we was a football state. We didn't look at 
baseball. I mean football. We looked at baseball. Hank Aaron. Uh, all the people that played for the Dodgers, Junior Gillum, Murray Wills, uh, all of those people we looked at. Don Drysdale, Sandy Koufax. We looked at the Yankees, you know, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris. Also, along with, with the first black on the team that played catcher, Elston Howard. We looked at all of that. Because we couldn't wait to wait on Saturday to come home and see the baseball game of the week. Which was on NBC. And which was the first color sports event that was held on TV. But we're talking about Turner Park. And what big heart the late but never forgotten Bob Watson See, this is what we're doing on Facebook. We believe in a legacy. What do that sign say? Bob Watson. The man been dead, but you know his name is still living. This is a legacy that we're trying to do here on Facebook. All that other stuff is careless because these videos are going to keep on going. I'd like to thank Mr. Status Edwards. He understands what I'm doing. Mr. Jerry Shepard, he understands what I'm doing. When I say I'm understanding, that means I'm leaving the legacy down for the next generation. And that's what Bob Watson did. He didn't say it was for blacks only, but his intention was they're going to blacks. But now if blacks don't want it, the Hispanic squad going to get it. And if they don't want it, you know what? The Dominican Republican people like El Tuve, El Tuve, and Alvarez, when they raise their kids up, they're going to come right out here and join the Little League so they can be like their father. So I'm here today to tell you and let you know this magnificent park was put together by Mr. Bob Watson. And he had the help from the Astros owner, which was Drayton McClain. Now, as far as the new owner, Jim Crane, personally, I don't know nothing he did for blacks. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just being straight up with it. I'm not trying to pull a race card. I'm just calling it like I see it. But nevertheless, we got a park out here. And maybe he don't want to do nothing for blacks because some of the blacks don't want to come out here and support this. So why should he build a park out in Third Ward? When they ain't even coming out here to enjoy this million dollar facility that Bob Watson and Drayton McLean put out here for them. No, I don't blame him. So I'm saying this to say this, Facebook family. We got to get off of our pity pat and stop looking at the white man and start looking at us. These kids, black kids, don't even want to come out here and play no baseball. Number one. It ain't they fault because they don't have black leaders that's going to get off from work to come out here in the hot sun to help manage these little kids and teach these kids. So it is what it is. Facebook family, I hate to get emotional with it, but it upsets me because we always point the finger at the white man still point the finger at us. And like I said before, when they were close, when they trying to close these HISD schools down, they looking at one way. You know, three strikes. We playing baseball. Three strikes. You're supposed to be out. And this is what a lot of the Republican people and Donald Trump people are saying about us blacks. Number one, strike one. We ain't gonna stick together, and ain't nobody gonna argue with you about that because it's true. Strike two, no matter what you do for us, we still find some god doggone reason to complain about something. We never happy. Strike two. Strike three, half of us ain't gonna go out and vote anyway. The reason why, oh, my vote don't count. I ain't gonna waste my time voting because the white folk gonna do what they wanna do anyway. And that's strike one, strike two, strike three, you out, and I'm out of here.